In this video, we're aboard a 1985 Mazda 929, which has a glorious combination of brown and, well, it's almost beigey interior, which we will show you later. But for now, I'm going to go for a drive with the owner of said car. Hello. Hello. Thank you for letting me drive your fine automobile. You're very, very welcome. Here we go then. Let's unleash the mighty power of the Mazda 929. The strange thing about these Mazdas is they were only sold as estates in this country. There were other versions elsewhere and they are enormous. It feels like I'm driving around in a huge American wagon. Uh, I'm sure that was the intended market. So how long have you owned this car? Um, coming up to two years now. Right. And is it one you always wanted or is it just it came available and you were like, I'm having that? Uh, no, no, I was uh, intention intentions was um, to get a Datsun mm -hmm. uh, of any description to be honest um, had a, a little peruse on the old eBay dangerous place yes after a few drinks um, and came across this uh, and just thought wow I have not seen one of them in a long time mm -hmm. a long long time so um, yeah made the made the journey down to Leicester uh, saw it bought it straight away um, and, and that's it really. Mm. So you took it to Festival of the Unexceptional? Yeah, year, yeah. Where it was it, in the concourse? It was, yeah. So did you get a lot of attention there? I did, yeah, it was really nice. Um, fantastic festival. Yes, yeah, um, I mean, it's all my favourite stuff. It's like they've invented the event just for me. Yeah, yeah. It's to celebrate the bland and mundane really, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, no, I guess this is it. I mean, we are not here for the driving dynamics or the performance. No because um, it doesn't really seem to have any. Well, I can prod the loud pedal and it does make it louder, but yeah. No speed record is going to be broken today, I don't think. So what do you like about the car now you've got it? Um, it's just so different. It's, um, it stands out in, in the crowd. Everybody seems to be driving around now in modern um, cars that are all the same you know yeah, all they're all the same just rebadged yeah. differently you know and whereas, whereas take it up to 50 now <laughs> whereas this is um it's just it's just out there it's got a little bit more i think to, personally to me it's got a little bit more than say a cortina because as much as fords are all right there's a there's a mass market for fords yeah you know there's and obviously that you know reflecting the prices of, of old fords now Yes, but weird, but there are so many more surviving, but they're worth such ridiculous sums. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the no nostalgia kick, I guess. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because I get a bit of a nostalgia kick with this car, because a neighbour used to have one when I was growing up in Birmingham, and uh, it used to annoy us because it would take up the space of about two cars parked roadside. Um, but I can't really complain, because the one time I did knock on his door to say, I need you to move your car, mate, um, he gave me a Model 2 CV. So, there you go. You, you never know what you're going to get when you go around to complain to your neighbours. A bit loud and all. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, certainly this is not a dynamic car. It's got a leaf sprung rear axle. Um, the ride is not refined. Um, the engine is very much set for torque rather than power. And the gearbox responds accordingly. It, I see it's very keen to change up as quickly as possible, really. And threading it around this roundabout here. Yeah, I don't have any great desire to go particularly quickly in it. There's a really bad bit of road there. But it's fine, we're over it now, it's smooth again. But it's typical Japanese in that it's just so easy and effortless to drive, really. Nice and power steering, uh, just nice and smooth, just press the throttle pedal and away it sort of ambles. It gathers pace. It's not really interested in zooming along. How masters have changed. <laughs> yeah. So do you clock up many miles in the car? Eh, not really. I mean, the, the well, first... where are we going here, by the way? Oh right, if we go around the roundabout. Straight oh, on. Straight on. Yeah. Right, right. Let's see if we can do that from this lane. You're all right. You keep going. That's fine. Um, yeah, the festival was the, the first time it, it really did any sort of miles. Mm -hmm. um, so how many was that for you? 
Uh, it was a 300 mile round trip. So this and, one? Yeah, this one, yeah. So it was um, it was the first real big test of the uh, the rebuilt engine. Ooh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was that wasn't cheap. So what, what had gone wrong with it to require that work? Well, I, I'm taking it up to um, to North Allerton for a weekend, mm -hmm. uh, and it broke down a couple of times there, a couple of times back, um, and it had overheated. Um, so from then, it's just always been a little bit tappity, a bit knocking noise, a bit, you know, so it's, um, it needed addressing, took it to a garage, they had a look and says, right, well, unfortunately, um, you got a, a, a broken piston ring, uh, your, your bearings are worn, um, so it's like, right, okay, well, where do we go from here? So I thought, instead of just a little tickle, it's got to be done right, got to do everything, so... Excellent. I had all the pistons, mains, big ends, a crank grind, um, timing chain, oil pump, Blimey. full gaskets. So is it easy to get the parts? No. Oh. <laughs> no. Of course, no. It's, ja it's Japanese. <laughs> um, I mean, to be fair, there was one company in this country uh, called Thornton's. Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, they they were fantastic. Oh yeah, great. They were fantastic. You know that. If they didn't have it, they could get it. Mm. But there was a lot of stuff that I had to get from um, uh, Australia. Like I mentioned, the, the chap in Australia that's been uh, amazingly helpful. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can see why these would be popular over there. Yeah. He, uh, he used to manage to get me a, a few a few little bits and bats, like uh, the, the fan shroud is, was missing uh, when I first bought it. Uh, he's, he's sent me up uh, a little replacement panel for the uh, for the front wing that's got a little bit of tin worm being attacked on it, um, mm -hmm. and rear seat belts, which never came standard in this country. But it was something that I thought, well, if I've got two kids, and I thought it'd be nice to have seat belts in. Yeah, I've not put them in yet. <laughs> uh, they don't actually fit properly because um, there's a where you bolt the um, seat belts in. Uh, you need you need to weld on a panel for it right. to, to to pass yeah. it on properly. So but that's a, an ongoing thing. Once again, can we have the Peugeot 107? It's already into second gear. It's level pegging. Oh no, she's off. Ah. I'm not really trying to be honest. It, <laughs> it doesn't feel like that sort of car. Yes, it does feel like the sort of car that should have about seven kids in the back playing football or something. Back in the days when we didn't worry about rear seat belts. I remember my dad used to have a, uh, an old Volvo 240 estate. Mm, they were enormous. And just left there. And. Um, just here? Yeah, it's yeah. fine, yeah. And I remember uh, going camping and coming back, there were, once again, there were seven of us. I know me and I think my brother was sat in the boot without, there was no seats in the boot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just sat sideways um, and we're involved in a, a, an accident. Oh dear. <laughs> but they were fine because we were just running to the back of a trailer. Um, we never got there, it was fine. We're in a Volvo, so there were no issues. But you, you could pretty much probably get four people in the back, I think. Yeah, the rear window one. seems ever such a long way away. Amazing. Right, so let's have a walk around this enormous beast of a Mazda then. Um, it's certainly lengthy, that, that's just the bonnet, that's quite enormous. It's also a fantastic metallic green colour, very much of its time. But yeah, it truly, truly enormous. And um, if we have a peek in the boot, Look, the gas struts are struggling with the weight of the mighty tailgate. I quite like the fact it even has a locking knob on the inside. Don't see that every day. But yeah, considerable space. Right, here we are under the bonnet of the um, Mazda and um, plenty of space. Look, you can see an awful lot of road. So much space, there's an enormous washer bottle. 
and um, they can get the jack in as well and still have room to spare. So this is the shroud that came all the way from Australia, which will help with the cooling. And uh, it's been tidied up a bit in here, but not excessively. It still looks an honest engine bay. So I've got the firing order on top of the engine there, along with it proudly saying overhead cam, which is one of very few um, fancy features on this engine. Otherwise it's very, very conventional. And if we go around the other side, See, it's even still on a steering box. No rack and pinion system here. But at least it's power assisted and um, it feels quite nice to be honest compared to some Japanese cars I've driven and especially some British cars with power steering where you can't feel anything going on at all. Right, let's jump aboard the interior where um, we find it's mostly mint humbug-esque. Green on the outside and brown on the inside. Check out the marvellous door furniture that looks like a 1970s hi-fi really. If we jump in, we've got a stereo built into the dashboard. So um, if you want to upgrade your tunes, you're a bit stuffed really. A digital lock with a free lock. Um, if you know what that is, let me know. And I love the diagrams, the little proper boots on the um, heater gauges. That's very nice. Little oddment tray, glove box, more very, very 1970s. And reasonable space in the boot as well, in the back rather. I think there's a decent amount of leg room. And a split folding rear seat. There you go, a rather interesting, but yet remarkably uninteresting Mazda. Strange to think that we're building conventional cars like this, but then also stuff like the RX-7. And in some markets you could get this car with a rotary engine, um, which presumably has a, a rev counter that goes up an awful lot more than that. I don't think I'd like to take this engine to 6,000 revs. It wouldn't be appropriate. So there we go. That was the mighty, huge, enormous Mazda 929. Uh, if a Volvo 240 estate wasn't doing it for you, this was an interesting alternative. Uh, if as long as you like leaf springs and nothing exciting at all. But still, it's um, one heck of a way to move antiques. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.